She is one of the most recognizable and arguably objectified bodies of our generation, having been groomed into a caricature-like sex symbol role from a young age. And despite her damning sex tape scandal and the recent re-traumatization through the exploitive Disney Plus series, Pamela Anderson is more powerful and inspiring than ever. She was one of the first and most successful celebrity animal rights activists, recently nailed her performance on Broadway, and has just signed on with Food Network to host her very own plant-based cooking show, Pamela with Love. And with the success of her new Netflix docuseries, Pamela, A Love Story, and her memoir, Pamela with Love, the woman is finally taking the narrative back. This is the year of Pam. So let's take a page out of Miss C.J. Parker's plant-based cookbook and attempt to eat like Pamela Anderson for a day. Hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. In today's video, I will be attempting to eat like vegan activist, actress, model, author, and fellow badass blonde Canadian, Pamela Anderson. Obviously, I think that videos where people eat exactly like celebrities or really anyone are problematic as because everyone's needs will be unique. So I will simply be using Pam's go-to meals and recipes to teach gentle nutrition and build balanced meals that feel good to me. Also, don't copy what I eat either because again, your needs will be different. But if you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe to this channel like right now before you go any further. And don't forget to follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. Let me hop in here super quick to talk about my sponsor, Element. As I'm getting older, I've realized how much better I feel when I'm properly hydrated. And yes, this obviously means focusing on drinking a lot of water every day, but this also means ensuring I'm replenishing electrolytes too. And anytime I speak with any of my RD colleagues about electrolyte supplements, we are all in agreement that Element is our go-to. So Element is an electrolyte drink mix with no sugar, gluten, colors, or artificial ingredients added, containing an evidence-based electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams sodium 200 milligrams potassium and 60 milligrams magnesium. I spent a few months in Florida this year and I played tennis in the heat a few days a week. And if I didn't have my element afterwards, I kind of felt off all day. Ensuring I'm keeping on top of my fluid and electrolyte needs helps to regulate hormones, nutrient absorption, and fluid balance to reduce the risk of headaches, muscle cramps, and fatigue. And it's not just for exercising heavily outdoors. I depended on these things while I was breastfeeding. And if I drink, I always have an electrolyte drink before bed. And even if you're not doing any extracurriculars, some folks are just kind of salty sweaters and may need a little more electrolytes to feel their best. My favorite is the watermelon. And when I'm craving something a little spicy, the mango chili totally hits. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. So you get eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is an ideal way to try all eight flavors or share Element with a salty friend. So you can get yours at drinkelement.com slash Abby Sharp. And this deal is only available if you use my link. So again, go to D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Abby Sharp to get yours today. The name on everybody's lips is gonna be Abby. <laughs> oh man, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Okay, but no joke, guys. When I was a musical theater junkie back in the day, I was obsessed with the role of Roxy Hart. I would have done anything to play Roxy. So I'm vibing with Pam right now. And I'm very excited about this kind of like vegetarian heavy day. Is there a smoke in my house? Does it look smoky? My eyes just deceiving me. Does it look smoky? Let's take a look here, folks. Okay, so according to Hollywood, life, Pamela said, I became vegetarian for compassionate reasons, but the health benefits are more than I'd hoped for. And she's totally right. Abby, not that it takes a rocket scientist to figure out that vegetables are good for you, but can you give us like a brief overview on the science of the benefit-backed reasons for a plant-based diet? Just in case we got any raw carnivore stranglers. 
in the back there. The evidence in support of eating more plant-based is truly undisputed. Well, unless you're Michaela Peterson or some kind of TikTok carnivore crudy. But research suggests that vegan diets tend to be higher in fiber, antioxidants, plus vitamins like potassium, folate, and antioxidants. So they have been linked to reduced risk of diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. And since Pam has credited her diet for her iconic body, we have lots of studies suggesting that plant-based diets can also help you lose weight. And it doesn't have to be full vegan. Research suggests that folks eating more plant-based still saw greater weight loss outcomes than those following a Western standard omnivore diet. So yeah, our girl Pam knows what's up. Okay, so the quick and dirty of Pamela's diet is that she eats vegan, as we've established, and she practices intermittent fasting. So she usually eats between 10 and 6 p.m., which is a pretty common 14-hour fast. Now, another really interesting factoid that I learned about Pamela while I was researching her diet is that she described gaining 25 pounds while she was writing her memoir as like a physical reaction to dealing with the trauma. She describes it as gaining a puffy suit of armor. Now, according to Pam here, she didn't change her diet other than maybe having like a little bit more alcohol. So Abby, is it possible to gain weight that dramatically without any kind of measurable change to the calorie equation? Great question, Abby. And I know what you're thinking. It must be the fault of the big bad fat storage hormone, cortisol. Now, it is true that high cortisol levels can play a role in weight gain. So for example, one study found that those with high cortisol gained 1.12 kilograms over six months, whereas those with lower cortisol gained 0.53 kilograms. But cortisol doesn't necessarily make you automatically gain fat. If it does make you gain weight, it's because it increases appetite and food craving. Things. If high cortisol actually does anything metabolically, it might actually slightly increase resting metabolic rate. Cortisol also doesn't seem to induce fatigue since it actually releases ephedrine. But we do know that chronic stress may reduce motivation to exercise. So I'm certainly not discounting Pamela's lived experience. I'm sure she did gain weight during this very challenging traumatic time, but it was more likely just because she was unconsciously eating a bit more or moving a little bit less due to lack of motivation. And all of that is incredibly common in times of stress and trauma. Well, speaking of cortisol, I need my daily dose of anxiety, AKA coffee time. And according to Healthy Living Magazine, Pamela enjoys espresso with non-dairy creamer and some agave. Agave definitely has a little bit of a health halo as a natural sweetener, but Abby, is it actually any better for you than white sugar? kind of depends on your definition of healthy. Agave became popular because it technically has a lower glycemic index when compared to regular table sugar. And that's because it is low in glucose, but is high in fructose. In fact, it has even more fructose than high fructose corn syrup, which is ironically one of the most demonized sweeteners on the market. Confusing. I know, but that's kind of nutrition pseudoscience for you. Now I go into detail in the pros and cons of high fructose corn syrup in my video right here. But in short, fructose is metabolized by the liver and too much fructose can increase your risk of high cholesterol, type two diabetes, heart disease, and fatty liver disease. Obviously a bit of agave in your coffee or tea is not going to make or break your health, but ultimately it should be consumed no differently than regular table sugar and enjoyed in moderation. We really should have invested in a boob cup for this one, but the bum will do. So this is my favorite non-dairy creamer. It's not super sweet, which is why I really like it. Cause you guys know, I don't really like sweet coffee. A little espresso, a little of that, agave. I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about this. Cause again, I don't like sweet coffee. Sweet and strong. Not my usual coffee order, but she'll do. Okay, so in pretty much every article that I read about Pamela's diet, she talks about her love of avocados. So naturally we have to have avocado toast, um, but she also told Healthy Living Magazine that she makes her own peanut butter. I mean, I know people do it, but why? Anyways. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna put this Amazon special little food processor situation to the test. No promises here. We got our craft standing by. 
So let's see how this goes. I guess the benefit is you get to like add as much salt or sugar or in this case oil, whatever oil you like. I don't know. I think it's going to need some oils to get this going, but actually it doesn't. It says you don't, but we'll see. I mean, if you're a fan of smooth peanut butter, she's not gonna hit. I'm not, I don't have the patience to just like stand here all day. At the sign like five hours later. Five hours later. I'm so proud. I made peanut butter. This feels like Oh. <gasps> I can't believe I actually did it. I mean, I probably could have done with less oil too because it's like pretty watery. But I mean, for a first attempt, I'm really proud of this. I'm really proud of myself. Guys, feels like a really big moment for me as a mom. Let's toast some bread. We are gonna do Owen sweet, Owen savory. So sometimes guys, you just can't, you can't choose if you want the sweet or the savory toast, you have both. We're gonna do peanut butter and maybe some banana on one and our avocado toast on the other. Whoop! All right, I picked up some of this Just Egg, which I've done before and it's like so easy. I think I just microwave this, right? Yeah, microwave. This is just gonna add a little more protein. There's 13 grams in two of these little egg foldies. So we left that for us. Let's microwave that bitch up. All right, moment of truth. We got a good avocado for our Pam. Oh, I feel it. She feels, yeah, yes. I specifically had to order extra avocados because I'm always so nervous about this. Like it's, <sighs> what I keeps, keeps me up at night. All right, let's get mm, avocado on the big one. Smashy, smashy. Oh, she crunchy. This is a double toasted sourdough situation. She's delicious. Oh, there. It's looking everywhere for that. A little salt. Oh, that was aggressive. And we got our just egg. Do we unfold it? No, I think we just have to do this. It's not as aesthetic as like, you know, a sunny side up, but she'll do. And then this is my favorite. You guys have seen me eat this a lot. Curry ketchup. It's so good. It'll just gussy that up a little bit. Okay, and then let's do our sweet. Moment of truth with our peanut butter. It actually is great. I mean, I have to taste it. Mmm. Mmm. Well, I mean, it helps I put sugar in it. So that is really good. Okay, crunchy peanut butter down. Okay, and Pam is also apparently into grapefruits. Tell me you're a 90s icon without telling me you're a 90s icon. Obviously, sugar. Sugar is vegan. We love that. A little, okay, so whatever. We're having grapefruit. Guys, this is a balanced breakfast. Oh, now that smells so good. I should have probably patted it dry, but we're gonna work with it. It's been a long time since I brulee a grapefruit, okay? This is like a little bit circa 2010. There's a fine line between burnt and caramelized when it comes to bruleeing. I'm just gonna take it right to the edge. Nice. I'm ready to eat that. Mmm. A lot of work for like 10 calories for the whole thing, but delicious. All right, let's try these guys. Sweet, savory. Mm, we go savory first. Mm. I actually really like the folded egg too. Very convenient. And my award-winning 
peanut butter. This is a meal, guys. Mm. Wham, bam. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> All right. Got some fuel in the tank, let's talk exercise. So Pam has been quoted as saying that she actually doesn't really work out that much, though there's no question that the woman stays active. She just got off of an impressive stint on Broadway where she no doubt clocked countless hours in rehearsals and on stage. And because of where she lives, she's able to get in lots of steps, just like walking around her garden or taking the dogs out. In fact, according to New York Post, while she was performing in New York City, she actually moonlighted as a dog walker for this super cute Irish settler named Dash. Which kind of makes me think, maybe I should take my own dog for a walk. Poppy? We got the body moving, we got the blood a pumping. And speaking of blood pumping, I read Pam go on the record to say eating vegan is great for blood flow. It's an aphrodisiac diet, which suits me perfectly. And this is why Pamela has been one of the most iconic and arguably most effective vegan activists of all time. She somehow found a way to utilize her sex icon bombshell brand to sell animal rights. And we are here for it. And while I love this cheeky sass, Abby, can you like fact check the whole aphrodisiac diet thing? <laughs> so this is a bit of a marketing statement put out by PETA a while back when the whole eating for sexy times was kind of in vogue. The theory is grounded in the idea that plant-based foods are typically rich in nutrients and amino acids important for blood flow like arginine, citrulline, nitrates, and antioxidants. And if it helps get the blood flowing here, here, and here, it's also maybe gonna get things going down there as well. And in theory, sure, that's true. But there's no hard clinical evidence that any specific foods are actual aphrodisiacs. So we actually have no clue how many pomegranates you'd have to eat to like see a legitimate boost in libido. Most foods that are reported to enhance sex life are those that we associate with sensuality and stimulating the senses. They're basically foods that help remind us of sex. Oysters are wet and slippery. Chocolate is sweet and rich. Berries are juicy. Asparagus beers look kind of like a dick. And avocados look like balls. So if that's what turns you on, let's make avocado toast for days. And on that note, let's talk lunch brought to us by Pam's seemingly buried old digital cooking series, Sensual Vegan. So I dug deep for videos from the Sensual Vegan um, and I found the website to promote the show itself has sadly being pulled down. But online it was described as a plant-based cooking show with lots of sexual innuendos and cleavage. <laughs> and seeing as Pamela teamed up with a professional chef, I would think there probably was some really great plant-based recipes there. And definitely ahead of the time. I'm not even sure when this officially aired, but the recipe photography was pretty dated. So I'm gonna say a while ago. Now I did see one article mention that one of the recipes that she would make on the show was a classic three bean salad, which just happens be like one of my favorite plant-based recipes of all time. That said, my gut has a hard time with just like straight up beans for lunch. So I'm gonna throw some other ingredients in there to balance everything out. Let's do it. All right, let's drain some beans. I got a combo of chickpeas and red beans, red kidney beans. And like, you gotta drain the out of these if you want to cut down on the fart factor. You can add the five hours later name here too. Five hours later. She's getting lots of use today. I've got like a barley quinoa mix here. That I just cooked. Some of that goes down. Then we get like a little bit more carbs. Got some beans for our protein, some tomatoes, cucumber. And, oh, <laughs> those are avocado on the loose. Cause she loves avocado. We're gonna just put that in everything. There you go. And everything's going in one bowl. I'm not gonna like make even a dressing outside the bowl. We're gonna just do it here. Really super simple folks. Little lemon, 
little avocado oil. Salt, pepper. And I got this vegan feta. I feel like vegan cheese is coming a long, long way from the early days. It's more like chev consistency, but I'm here for it. As I said, we love a classic bean salad. It's such like a perfect picnic side, but this just is a little bit more balanced and satiating for me and a little less likely to aggravate the old gut. So we got healthy fats in our avocado and avocado oil. We got protein in the quinoa and the beans, lots of fiber in our barley quinoa situation and all the veg. I mean, variety is the spice of life, and especially when it comes to plant foods and our gut microbiome, you wanna get as many options in there as possible. So this looks like a great lunch. Oops. The barley is like really surprisingly good. I love it with the beans. Mm. Mm. All right, let's talk snack here. So obviously Pamela loves her fruits and vegetables. We love that for us. And according to Women's Day, she's a big fan of cucumbers. Already checked that box. Loves celery, also pistachios, French bread, hummus, and pita, and grapefruit, and avocado, as we already discussed. So I feel like this calls for a random snack plate situation. Let's do it. Very important question. Are you team like circular cucumber or do you do strip? Ready? I think your psychopath if you use strips. What? Mm, well, we're doing a combo today just to get people riled up. Okay, look at that. And then you can choose. Pick your poison. Pita dippers, pistachios. This is like my kid's favorite plate. So. We love it. Hummus. Mm. Just like that. Mm. We got protein in our hummus, healthy fats in our pistachios, fiber in our veg. This looks delicious. And I know Pam would approve. I'm teasing you with my psychotic choice. Mm. The strips just taste better. All right, Pamela, talk dinner to me. So according to Hollywood Life, Pamela makes a mean vegan pasta bolognese, and I love anything to do with pasta, so I'm very excited about this. Based on what I've read, she typically uses like a vegan ground meat, and we got like so many of those on the market today. It's probably come a long way since Pamela started to make vegan bolognese. Abby, I know we talked about this before, but can you quickly just give us your thoughts on on these kinds of products. So once we actually did the comparison work for us, plant-based ground meat products tend to have less calories, less saturated trans fats, and a little bit more fiber. Though the regular beef tends to have more protein, zinc, and vitamin B12. The downside of the faux ground meat, of course, is that they tend to be higher in sodium and other additives, which may or may not be a priority or concern for you. I think they're a great alternative when you're craving that meaty texture, but ultimately it should not be a consistent stand-in for whole foods. So yeah, that's why I often like to go halvesies. So I have like half a pack of vegan faux meat, and then I'm going to mix in some canned lentils. Super convenient, super easy, great source of protein and fiber, and it cuts down on the added sodium and other additives. So we got our Pam. Pam? Pam? You saying pan or Pam? I'm saying Pam. We got our pan heating up here. Little bit of avocado oil going down. Woo! Coffee just hit today. A little bit of oil. And I'm just gonna saute some mushrooms here first. All right. Mushrooms need lots of salt and pepper. Otherwise they taste like poop, let them. Soak up the seasoning. Okay, and while we do that, we're going half seas on our pasta and some zucchini in here for some more fiber and micronutrients. You gotta salt the shit out of it. That's gonna help to dry out some of the water so that it's not like a soggy vegetable mess. Unless you're going for that, as we did when we did our Meghan Markle video. Delicious, but I did have to cheat the recipe because... Ain't nobody got time for this. All right. Oh my God. 
I put way too much coffee in my cup today. All right, I'm gonna move these guys over a little bit, squeeze out our faux meat, some lentils. And because there's already a lot of salt in the faux meat, I don't even think we need to add anything else in here. Just some basic canned sauce, because I'm cheating. And that is how we roll for dinner. One pot, or in this case, pan. Get some pasta. Oh, this looks good. All right, I'm gonna just like turn this off for a second until our pasta's ready, and then we put her together. All right, so we pat. We pat, pat, pat. Okay, pat, pat, pat. Throw these guys in. And let's turn her back on. To give her a toss. Mm -mm. Oh, y'all. Yeah. And if you like, feel it's a little dry, you can just add a little bit of starchy cooking water. But I kind of like it thick, so. Like my men. Oh man. All right, let's plate her up. All right, we got some vegan cheese. Actually tastes like Parmesan, I'm quite impressed. That's a keeper. So this is totally my kind of dinner. It's fast, it's easy, it's relatively inexpensive to put together. And I made it all in one pan. Pan. I think I might be able to help with a pan pam dilemma. Yeah, that'd be great. Pan, yeah, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, this is how I like to roll. I don't even like to follow a recipe. I mean, you just kind of throw some things into a pot and see how it goes. And look at that. Super well balanced. We got protein in our vegan meat and our lentils, lots of fiber in the pasta and the veg, and some healthy fats in the cooking oil and the vegan cheese. And check that out. Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. Mmm. Seasoning on point. Twirl you for days. Oh my goodness. Mm. So, according to People Magazine, Pamela is a big fan of the rosé. And I'm totally okay with a little liquid dessert. Poppy, let's snuggle. Poppy. Hey. So I'm like vibing with this kind of day. Totally my style of eating and cooking. It was easy, it was accessible, it was relatively inexpensive, it was plant focused and balanced. And we got rosé, hello. We love it. Also, I am so excited about Pamela's new cooking show. I'm gonna resubscribe to Food Network just to watch it. Pop it. But I wanna finish the rest of this documentary. So guys, if you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on whose diet you'd like to see me make a day of eating inspired by. Subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Cheers.